In this video, I'm going to show you how to make any tapered coil in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to give you a tip on how to create a tapered coil in Fusion 360. Now, there are a lot of different ways that we can go about this. All of them are essentially hacks because there's no direct way to create a tapered coil in Fusion. Now, with all of the different methods that I could cover, uh, which I actually just ended up recording a video on it and decided that really there's only one tip that you need. So we're gonna cover ways that we can use a couple of tricks, a couple of workarounds to make essentially any tapered coil that you can think of. So to get started, we're gonna create some surfaces. And if you wanna follow along, you don't have to make exactly what I'm making, but there are a few things that we wanna keep in mind. So the first thing that we wanna keep in mind is I'm gonna create just a cone to start with. Uh, next, I'm gonna create a cone that sort of tapers and tapers back in on itself. And lastly, I'm just going to use a spline, uh, something you know, that has a lot of shape. And one more that we want to talk about is one that goes from a straight section and it, it sort of tapers away. Now, this one here, I want to move this in because I, I don't want it to be that large of a diameter. This is going to get tricky when we start to revolve these things, but uh, just bear with me and we will make something that I am sure is worth it. So now that we have all these profiles, we're gonna start by revolving and I'm gonna make a surface for each of these. So the axis of revolution is going to be that vertical line we created, which could also just be the Z axis. Need to bring the sketch back so I can make a couple more revolves. So the next profile is gonna be this one here. Again, vertical axis, repeat the process. This time we're gonna do the one that sort of cuts back and goes vertical. And lastly, we're gonna do the one that's a spline. All right, now that we have all those, we can hide the sketches. The original body is fine. And then I need to sort of add fillets to some of these. I wanna make sure that I have a smooth transition and I don't have a sharp transition there. Cause in reality, if you're making something like a spring or a coil, you are gonna have a smooth transition. It's not gonna be sharp. I'm gonna make this one a bit bigger. And that last one being a spline, uh, it's, it's fine as it is. So I wanna look at which one is the largest diameter and I think it's gonna be the spline and this is gonna, the one I'm gonna to use to drive the outside shape. And the smallest one is the center of that tapered cone that's gonna drive the inside shape. So to do this, I'm gonna create a solid coil. I'm gonna select the top plane and I'm gonna draw a coil that is smaller than the smallest diameter. And I just wanna make sure that it fits inside of everything. So over here inside of our section, we wanna make sure that we're using a square section. That'll become apparent in just a little bit. Then I don't care where the section position is, but I'm gonna decrease the section size a bit because I just wanna make sure that it's small enough that it fits inside of that geometry. And then I wanna deal with the height and the revolution. So I'm gonna bring this down a bit and make sure that it fits completely inside here. Again, not really a requirement, but it's just gonna, it's gonna help with what we're doing. And I think the number of turns is gonna be fine in this case. So we've got seven revolutions. Uh, you can define this however you want. You can do by revolutions and pitch, revolution and height, height and pitch. The spiral will give you a flat coil on a plane. And that is a way that we can create a, a sort of a 3D tapered spring on a tapered surface, but it doesn't work for any of the other ones. It's gonna cause problems. Okay, so now that I have this, the next step in this process is to create a ruled surface. Now, I did mention that this is sort of a hack. Um, we wanna make sure that we're using normal, but because it could go possibly two directions, we're gonna say alternate to make sure that we are dragging this out. We wanna make sure that it goes all the way through our largest surface. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now, before I get too far, I don't really need the solid coil anymore, but before I get too far, I need to make some copies of this. Now, in reality, you're only gonna be making one spring, but this, in this case, we're making several. So we've got four different shapes. I need to copy this four times. So just Control C, Control V and Enter, and I'm just gonna make sure that I have several copies of it. So the first way that we wanna do this is we wanna make sure that we use our trim tool the trim tool is going to be the original revolve, whatever shape you want. 
And then we're gonna get rid of the coil on the inside. So all the geometry on the inside we're gonna get rid of. Then we can hide or get rid of that original coil. And the reason that we're doing this is because now we have a path that we can sweep. So we're gonna use plane along path. I'm gonna do this from the bottom because I know it was a clean cut. I'm gonna go all the way to one, which is going to be that end point. And I'm gonna create a sketch on that. For most of these cases, I'm just gonna use a circle to represent this. If you want to use a different shape, then you have to use the sweep option that allows you to use a guide surface. And I can show that in one of the cases, but for this first one, we'll just use a circle. So we're gonna grab the circle and then the path is going to be that inside edge. Now, keeping in mind that it didn't really cut all the way through at the top, so this is not gonna be a smooth transition. So I am gonna end it there which is where it ended up coming through that tapered cone. So we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna hide those surfaces and now we've created a tapered coil. So in order to have this, pro this work, what I wanna do is I wanna move on to my next set of surfaces. And once again, you can see that it's kind of uh, not working at the top. So in order to just make sure that this works okay, I'm gonna extend the top of the shape up uh, just a little bit so that it goes all the way through and I'm gonna say, okay. Then again, this is gonna be my trim tool, get rid of everything on the inside, and this is going to give me that same internal path. So once again, plane along path, we need to put it all the way at one or zero, so the start or end of our selection, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a sketch. Once again, I'm gonna do a circle here, and we'll go to our solid sweep. So profile, and path. Notice that I have chain selection turned off because otherwise it would grab the entire inside and outside. But if it doesn't go all the way through, just hold down control or command if you're on a Mac and continue to add until you get everything you need. So we'll say, okay, we'll generate this as a solid, we'll hide the surface. And now you can see that we've got this sort of beehive looking spring. So we've got our tapered coil and the beehive looking spring from those two surfaces. Next, we're gonna move on to the third one and the third copy. Once again, you can see that these, we wanna make sure that they overlap properly. So I'm just gonna extend that up and it looks okay on the bottom. And then we're gonna use the trim tool. So hopefully you can start to see that the process is exactly the same. We're just recreating the shape that we want. Plane along path. In this case, the direction means that the start point is gonna be zero. And then once again, we're gonna go ahead and create a sketch. This time I'm gonna use a center point rectangle just so we can show the twist aspect and I'll make this wider than tall and we'll finish the sketch. In order to have this work, I need to bring back the original revolve. And note that when you're having problems, if you ever have a sweep that intersects itself, the surface sweep is a little bit more lenient. The surfaces can overlap and it'll be okay. The solids will not allow it. So we're gonna do a sweep in this case. We're gonna use a guide surface. So our profile is the rectangle. Our path is that internal edge. Once again, we need to hold down control or command to make sure that we get all the way to the end. And then the guide surface is going to be that revolve. I'm gonna select, um, try to select this and notice that it's only using the top as the guide. That's okay. Uh, it's going to keep the normal orientation. So let's hide all these surfaces and let's take a look at the end result. So you can see the end result is that rectangular sweep that follows that sort of tapered coil, something you might see as a strain relief. Uh, so again, that looks pretty good. The last one here is the spline. So this is probably the most unique shape. And I'm once again, I'm gonna extend the top. Really, I should have just made the coil a little shorter, but I wanna just make sure that my trim is nice and clean. So again, trim tool is that revolve, and then we're gonna get rid of everything on the inside. And once again, same process, plane along path, select this, I'm gonna set this to zero. So it goes to the start point and then we'll just do another circle extrude. I'm sorry, a circle sweep. So once again, I'm gonna go back to the solids, sweep, grab that. This time we're only using a single path. And once again, I'm gonna hold down control or command to make sure that we grab everything Depending on how the surfaces were created and how the trims are, are done, you may have to select more geometry. But you can see here, now we've created a coil that is that sort of uh, 
that funny spline shape. So as I mentioned, I, I recorded this video before and I talked about a ton of different ways where we could use intersection curves and projecting to surfaces. But ultimately the most robust way is to create your coil as a square profile, do a ruled surface that goes out and intersects the shape that you want and trim those away so that you have either the outside or the inside edge of your, uh, your ruled surface as your path for your sweep. So I'm pretty sure that you can create basically any shape with this as long as you follow those, those steps. But if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.